for our first project uh, for first grade, uh, we are going to be making a P8 Mondrian picture. Um, it's actually going to be kind of a themed picture. And uh, Mondrian was an artist that worked with a couple of basic colors and basic lines. And we're going to do the same thing. You are going to need some materials. I'm going to be using uh, the bottom of a cup to create a stencil. I am going to be using two pieces of paper. One of the pieces of paper has been cut in half. Uh, then I'm going to need four markers. I need a blue, a yellow, a black, and a red. Okay. The other colors we won't be needing. We just need those four colors. Uh, we also need a pencil, a eraser, and you're probably going to want a ruler or straight edge. Uh, it doesn't have to be a ruler, but it just needs to be something that's nice and straight. get started. First, this is going to be kind of a two-parter uh, assignment, so we're going to do the first part here. First part, we're going to do a little bit of drawing. I need to connect the two corners across from each other. Now, my ruler is not quite long enough, so I need to aim it as best I can, and then draw a line. Move it down a little bit, like that. Okay. What we're going to be making is a spider web. Uh, we need to make this is a spider web coming from the corner. So I need to put a dot about a little bit less than halfway from here to here. So put a dot here, and then we're going to use our ruler and connect it to the corner here. These are the not diagonal lines that we are using. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna figure out a, about the middle, maybe a little bit higher. I'm going to connect it like this. And connect it back to the corner. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create bumps that connect each layer or line to each other. So I like to start out close because those are really easy. Now from the edge to the line, another bump, another bump, another bump. Notice that they're all touching. I'm going to create a bigger version here, and the bump is just going to be bigger. Bigger bump, bigger bump, bigger bump, bigger bump. All right, we're going to do it again. A bigger bump, bigger bump, bigger bump. Okay, and then I'm going to do it one more time. It's really big. Right there. And one last one there. So I have four rows. You really don't want to have too many layers of it because then it gets a little crowded. The next part is going to be using the black. The black is going to be our lines going over the web to make it stand out. And we want to use the wide side of the marker. We want a nice, thick line. We want a nice, thick tracing. Take your time. Make it look good. If you need to turn your paper, turn your paper. Next, we need to do the bumps. Again, I'm very carefully following my line and tracing them. A little practice with our tracing. And 
And if you noticed in Mondrian's picture, he used uh, the black a lot for his lines. Just like what we're doing. What his thought was is to break things down into the simplest forms of color and line that he could think of, which were black, white, and the three colors that we're going to use, red, yellow, and blue, which are the primary colors. Those colors make everything else. Okay, now we have our first web. Okay, um, and we can put the marker away, and then we're going to pick uh, one of the colors. So I'm going to do red first because it just happened to be the one I grabbed. And I'm going to pick two spots uh, to color. And then that's all we're going to do. So I'm going to outline it. I'm gonna again, I like to use the wide side of the marker because when they make the markers like this, the big ones, they're actually meant to be used on the wide side more than the tip. The tip is for small spaces like these. So in here, like if I was coloring this one, I would use my tip to color it because it's a tiny play space. The tips tend to run out of ink faster, so we have to be careful with how much we use them. All right, I'm gonna switch to my blue. I'm gonna pick two new spots. Uh, we're gonna do blue on this one. Careful about staying inside my lines, doing a good job coloring. Now, if for some reason you don't have markers, you could be doing this with colored pencils or crayons. Let's see, I need another blue one. Uh, let's do blue here. I think just blue looks good right there. to yellow. Let's see, I think a yellow one right here would be good. It's best not to do a yellow right after you do a black. You want to let the black dry a minute before you do it because a lot of times the black will streak. So that's why I did the yellow last here was so that the black marker has a chance to dry a little bit. Alright, I'm going to do all the edges here, that will be good. Okay, I think I'm going to, looks pretty good, but I think it needs another two spots colored, so I'm going to pick two colors, um, uh, either the primary yellow or primary blue or primary red. Let's see. I think, I think this one should be yellow here. And I'm going to put another red. I think I could use another red. We don't want to fill in all the spaces. We want to leave some white ones showing. So this first part is done. We're gonna let it sit off to the side here. And we need 
one of the half sheets of paper. We can hold off on the other one uh, for later. For this one, what I need you to do uh, is all we're gonna do is we're gonna color this thing totally black. So from start to finish, it needs to be uh, black. We're gonna use it because not everybody's got black paper. We're gonna create our own black paper for this so that we can just cut out what we need. We're gonna be cutting out a spider with legs and if we make this whole sheet black, then we have the whole sheet to work with. And that is where uh, we will leave it for this lesson.